traders good monday morning it's march 23rd 2014 9 44 in the morning uh, right now we're looking at e-sig remember we got stopped out yesterday took us out 11.98 trailed back down tick down uh opened up a little bit higher pop but it seems like opened up here but it seems like you know they're sellers and there's like a gap play so it's like a little trading range over here we gotta see what it does before we commit to it um Nexio, remember those comments I made on Nexio earlier uh, Friday after the market closed, right? Uh, what I think happened, this 115 million shares prior to close, 100 million shares being sold prior to close at point triple zero two. that's 20 grand. So my belief is, this is my belief now, don't call me on this and don't believe everything a trader or investor says is accurate and correct. But the looks of things, they marketed the... Uh, Gigit and Top Fan through S by uh, South by Southwest. Maybe they owe South by Southwest money, and you know they sold out some portion of shares so they can pay South by Southwest. Uh, this is just a theory of mine. Don't quote me on that. Like I said, we still got to see what it's going to do. As you can see, um, right now, and the point triple zero two right here, two hundred fifty thousand showing. Um, let's go to Pen Growth. Pen growth, look at that, looking good, right? 284, we're up 900 plus dollars on pen growth. It looks like it exploded, created that reverse of head and shoulders, or in the process of creating. You see that? Shoulder, head, shoulder. Look at that, that looks good, right? On the daily bar, oh, that looks real sexy. And what price we got at? We got at 261.5, pretty much right here, right? 262. You can see our price we got right here, 261.5. All right, it's a 285. It's uh, we're up 945 for the day, and now let's take a look at a weekly. See now the reversal of head and shoulders with the tripled bottom. You know this is the other shoulder here, but it has a form the head and shoulders. In order for an accurate head and shoulders to exist, well, this would this line would have to be broken, okay? And there's there's more than one line. Remember, like in the previous video, there's a trend line which I which I just put up, and this is a resistance level, right? So remember, the the trend line is a guideline. The um, horizontal line is uh, the resistance line. It tells us if it breaks through that, it's going to continue going higher. And if it does break through that, it formed a triple bottom with a reversal at play. So uh, we can see it explode to six, right? Um, this is a weekly bar, so each bar represents a week. It takes time, obviously. It doesn't happen overnight according to this pattern. But nevertheless, it looks like it's going down the direction and we're trying to execute. Um, we're not trying to execute it. We just want to make sure that it goes in either out direction so we can execute for a nice profit. Uh, pause. Oh, wait. Let's go to Belasia real quick. I forgot to talk about Belasia. This is Belasia, 161 by uh, 169. All right, remember we have 200,000 shares here. It's trading sideways. It's in this trading range, but it did look like on the the 10 minute that we did have some type of reversal pattern or pattern right here, and it seemed like it stabilized right here. It got a little choppy uh, Friday uh, throughout the day after I would say like 11 or so. So um, what we have is we have more resistance right here. Oh, let me see if I can fix that. There you go, and. Put a horizontal line and right here, 171. I want that to be broken through. Broke, it breaks through. We should get another push upwards, all right? So right now, uh, 0 0.0169. I'll pause it here. Remember, this tutorial is brought to you by WorldTradingInstitute.com. I'm an educator. My name is Zelman Yakubov. Uh, I provide all the education courses of live trading. I also provide investment advisory service and wealth management services, including money management services, through ZelmanCapital.com. Uh, furthermore, uh, I just released an app called MyCamCast. It's all spelled together, M-Y-C-A-M-C-A-S-T. It's available in uh, the Google Play Store for Androids only. And uh, I believe it will be out for uh, Apple products and Windows product products in the next few months. Uh, we're still in beta phase. However, notice our competitor, Meerkat, uh, came up to the market uh, over the weekend. And, uh, you know, my job was to start marketing my CamCast to let them know, hey, Meerkat, we're here. We actually, uh, we actually uh, released our product prior to you, and uh, they raised $12 million. So, uh, you know, uh, 
that that speaks volumes that uh, my camcast uh, can race uh, something of that nature as well. Anyway, I'll pause here. Take a look at my camcast. Uh, go to mycamcast.com or type my camcast in the Google Play Store and uh, download it. Use it. Share share live streaming videos with your friends, your families, uh, your business associates, whoever you need to. It's currently free. Go to mycamcast.com or to go uh, type in my camcast in the Google Play Store and download it today. I'll pause here. Provide you guys another update soon. Traders, just a quick update. It's 10.03 in the morning. Let's take a look at pen growth. Look at pen growth right here real quick. Bang! Right? Look at that. Up 20 cents for the day or up about 7.5% currently. Looking good. Pen growth looking very attractive. We like what we see here. Okay? Now, let's take a look at Nexio. It's doing the opposite. It's not looking very attractive, but how much further can it go, right? Look at this. 0 0.001 by 0 0.002. They just slapped 0 0.002 out of the ways. We'll see what happens moving forward right now, right? What are they going to do? Knock out 0 0.001? See what happens. Okay, so as you can see, it seems like people are hitting the 0.002s. Um, last time, it seemed like people were hitting the 0.003s. Then there was a huge seller that came in at the end of the close on Friday prior to the close. So, uh, you know, we want to we want to wait, you know, I don't want to keep doubling up shares until I see stabilization. But, you know, even though this is a great price and uh, even though uh, the CEO of Nexio said there will be no more reverse splits, uh, you know, after those prints on uh, Friday, I have to be careful and make sure. Let's see what happens at the end of this week with Nexio on Friday. Will there be more sellers stepping in? Will there be sellers now or will the buyers step in? The buyer step in, it's great. Depends how high it goes. Uh, you know, if it goes to 0 0.004, chances are I won't jump in. But if it stabilizes at 0.002 into 0 0.003 again, you know, maybe I'll just knock 0 0.003 out and buy some more. But we'll see. It's a little too early uh, to make that assumption even. Just wanted to give you guys uh, an update of what's going on with Nexio because if you heard the pre about the previous recording, I believe it was on the 20th of Friday, you heard me pretty much really upset that I saw that huge transaction. Well, it's two transactions. I believe one was for 65 million, one was for 50 million or something like that. Uh, like four, maybe four to six minutes prior to the close. So uh, we want to see what it does moving forward. I just really hope there's no more selling pressure because, uh, you know, even if you're a short seller, you need to cover somewhere, right? And you as an investor, especially when you was in a reverse split, and a reverse split at 20 cents, and now it's at 0.002. I, I, I just cannot figure out why would you sell it at this level because it's like you pretty much sold it for nothing, right? So uh, it would make sense if you buy at this level and try to average out your price. But uh, we'll see what happens moving forward. I'll pause it here, provide you guys another update soon. Traders, 1018 right now, looking at eSig like a hawk. Notice a somewhat of a WH pattern. Looks like it took me out at the lows at 1198. Then try and trail back up. But it's still too early to tell. I'm not sure if this is um, this pattern was created to capture me so I could go long. I just want to see if the ask declines. Then maybe I'll hit the ask. I'm pretty sure I could push the ask out of the way if they're showing it. It's showing its real number. Uh, unsure yet. But we'll see. Uh, this is a 10-minute bar right here. This one right here. Let's just take a look at the volume. The volume says not applicable. Okay. So you can't. Oh, sorry. There you go. 50,900. I was looking at MA. It does a NA. <laughs> 50,900 that was traded within the last 10 minutes. Prior to that, 212,000. Prior to that, 133,000. Prior to that, whopping 1.4 million. And that was today's trade. Yesterday, uh, excuse me, on Friday, it traded 1.3, almost 1.34 million. Uh, 1.3 million shares were traded uh, prior to the close, 10 minutes prior to the close on Friday. Okay, so now you see this drop right here. You see 84 at the bid, 288 at the ask. So it looks like the bid is uh, weakening over here, but the bid at 0.1201 has more volume and uh, remember this choppy trading right here all of this on Friday it looks like it's doing that here as well but um, 
they're just doing, an e doing that to e-cig right now as well. But uh, it's moving more uh, in moving more in price levels. Uh, you see like a 210 spread up and down, back and forth continuously, right? So um, what's going on, what that means is, well, if it goes one way or another, if it drops through that, well, if it breaks through that resistance level, it will explode. But if it drops through around this, well, we want the bar to close below here, right? If it breaks through either of these levels, it'll go the other way. It'll go that way and it'll go that way hard, all right? So you see 0 0.120 right here showing 84 compared to 0 0.1220 showing 288. So we'll see what happens moving forward. I just wanted to show you guys, uh, provide you this guy's uh, this update. It looks like W H, maybe even a bull flag. Uh, just unsure. The Mac histogram trying to turn over the PVO. That looks good for buyers. Um, however, uh, we saw this scenario play out on Friday, something similar throughout the trading day over there. So we need a little further confirmation. I'll pause you here, provide you guys another update soon. Pengrel's still up 20 cents. Uh, Tesla's down a buck 80. Um, uh, excuse me, Tesla's up 207. Gilead's down the buck 80. Um, you know, those two we have option plays on. Uh, that, that's nothing. It's nothing to look at. Uh, it's just time to look at it when we see one of those stocks drop, maybe 10, 15 dollars at least. Okay, for, for that day. That that give us some, make it some noise. Um, give it some noise. Excuse me. Malaysia Airlines at 120. Uh, you know. This uh, 160 bid has, uh, with over uh, 6 million shares, been holding there for the last few days. You know, as you can see, it was here, and this is at 60 as well, 60. So you see 60. Once they broke 60, they created it as a support. It looks like. So we're gonna see what happens moving forward. Malaysia Airlines, but I'm very confident with Malaysia Airlines. Can make a small little bounce downwards before it continues going upwards. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Pause it here. Provide you guys an update soon. I'm just gonna put up ESIC here before I pause it, and that's it. I'll give you guys another update soon. Traders, 10:25 in the morning. Update on next. Yo, buyers pushed 0 0.002 out of the way, and now the bid and ask is 0 0.002 by 0 0.003. It looks like buyers are stepping in here. Um, I would love to put, uh, you know, a huge portion of buy order at 0 0.002, especially looking at this level. But like I said, it's a little too early after what I saw on Friday. I have to make sure that if I continue buying next, yo. I have to make sure it's stabilized. I assumed it did, but it didn't, and I kept averaging out my price. I finally thought it would do something, but after those prints on Friday, got me a little worried some, okay? Uh, pause it here. Just wanted to give you guys that update, and uh, you can see the bid has picking up uh, for eSig, similar to the ask. Look at that. Look at that. And we're in that trading range, like I said. I'll pause it here. Traders, Zellman here, 10:38 in the morning. Esig update broke through its support level. Let's watch this bad boy crash. I already have my limit order over here. I placed my limit order at 0 0.0982. Uh, <laughs> it'd be nice if I get it. So let's see if this. Uh, let's see if Esig would like to crash right now. It's 11.90 by 11.91. Uh, 11.99. Excuse me. Now it's 11.82, 11.85 at the bid. Um, 11.99 by 11.85, well, 11.85 by 11.99. So it seems like there's going to be some selling pressure moving forward over here. And if there is, hit there you go, some more prints. If there is, I'm just hoping to capture uh, some of eSig at the price right there, 0 0.0982. And I'll show you why. I see a support level. Let me just zoom in. See, this is a support level right here, and this uh, there's two support levels. There's one over here below this tail, and one right here underneath this big bar. I want to make sure I get in at this bar because it could trail up to this green bar and start going up, right? And the reason why I say that, it could. doesn't mean it will, right? I mean, it could go up after 10.5 cents, or it could even go down to maybe 8 cents, and then or 8 cents, and then continue going higher, right? Uh, but when I look at the pattern trying to see if I can get it so we have this reversal up move however this wasn't broken right here so maybe wants one more bounce back uh, before it continues higher and I believe I could get that bounce back prior to obviously above the support so I'm trying to get it underneath 10 cents and then we'll see if uh, that support holds uh, if it doesn't hold um, you know, maybe I'll execute out of position, or maybe I'll just buy some more if it gets to five cents. I 
probably would execute out of position. Um, it, it depends what it's looking like at that time. Uh, but that's pretty much, you know, uh, trading, right? You have to understand how to trade properly. So right now it's at 11.66 by 11.89. Remember we got out on Friday when they took us out. I was like, hey, if it hits that print, it's going to go lower. Uh, today gapped up. Uh, try to test the resistance level, but look like it couldn't, right? And, uh, you know, I put those up on the 10 minute. You see this is a resistance level right here. And I put a support here. It couldn't. All right. So now hopefully it can deteriorate further. And if it drops really hard right now and it drops and uh, gives me, uh, captures me and lets me go long, chances are it might recover by the end of the day. So I'm hoping for a huge drop right now. I'll pause it here and provide another update real soon. I'm not saying we're going to get that drop, but I've seen it done several times before so maybe i'll get it capture it at its lows and then tick back up before the close and probably most likely break even for the day all right i'll pause it here provide you guys another update too traders i've been trying to get this bad boy i don't know why i can't get an e -sig. it just keeps popping up at my favor i'm there at five waiting let's see if i change my order since Bring it down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Four six. There you go. I'm trying to uh, not chase the stock. There you go. You see, they got. They wanted to fill me. I changed it and got uh, got in. I was trying to get in at 11.9. It just kept going up. Excuse me. Uh, this is very annoying. This beep. That's when you get into position. All right. So now we're in position. We're long. I was trying to get over here and just kept going higher. Seemed like the spread out grew. But what I like about it now is the support level right here. I like to see close above 12.7 now. 12.7 or higher with an hour and 30 minutes left. Okay, we're along 50,000 shares. We're up $87, but I'm pretty sure it seems very volatile at this level. But this up move confirmed uh, a huge support level for us. And let me just show you what I mean by that, if I can. Oh, let me see if I can do that. There we go. Oh, hold on. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. I'm trying. I do apologize. Oh, for crying out loud. trying whatever I'll do what I can it's probably just dragging it but you get the idea right it has to cross this you see the support level the resistance level I told you before it's breaking through it right now right oh man I could have saved the penny but I wasn't able to but I chased it and got in I'll pause it here provide another update too sorry guys had to step away I had some guests um, Anyway, uh, back it's 4.30 in the afternoon, the market closed. Let's provide you an update on what we're in currently. Uh, we'll start out, you know, let's start from the top. Let's start out with Pen Growth. It's up 25 cents per share today. Uh, looking good. Uh, this is what I expected. I like to see this reversal play. Um, CNBC, some woman on CNBC says she used to be a technical analyst and uh, there is clearly no bottom in oil or energy. Um, you know what? It's a good thing she used to be a technical analysis, right? Because um, it does look good. It still looks strong. It looks healthy on the daily. On the weekly, it looks extremely healthy. We just would like to see it close, you know, maybe above 315, 310. We want to be, we want it to close above. And you know what? Maybe let me just move these trend line up ah, let me see if I can zoom this oh there we go okay so we would like for it to close green above this red bar here it'll form a, not it'll form a bullish engulfing pattern but it'll also continue the formation of this reversal that we see 
and uh, you know it just tells us how strong it is right so it gives us further indication if uh, you know energy prices gas prices oil prices uh, finally bottomed and will you know trade up in the coming months or so um, you know so it, it we have to wait and see obviously we wanted to close above that by the end of Friday's close so we'll pay attention and we'll see how pen growth trades throughout the rest of the week moving forward okay um, for ECIG and uh, let me go into the 10 minute okay so it was trading here trading sideways and for some reason for some reason um, when I try to get into a uh, position over here, I believe it was, I'm not sure, somewhere I think 11, 5, 1, 5, 6, let, let, let me see. And I only picked up 100 shares by accident. And uh, that kind of hurt me. Uh, just trying to find it. Oh, right here. Uh, 0.125, right? So I try to get, when I started going up, I try to get in over here. But I accidentally only took 100 shares. Once they, someone saw that print, they started buying it, right? And I ended up picking up an additional 50000 at over here. Higher price than when I got out. I'm pretty upset about that. But uh, the good news is it's looking healthy now. It's looking strong. The uptrend battle is there. Um, you see this hammer over here this is showing support, trying to hold this bottom. So it's looking healthy, and I like the way it's looking right now. It looks like we got a nice little W wedge here. We've got three levels of support, one, two, three, and it looks like this one just was formed. Okay, so uh, that looks good. I was hoping for an update for ESIG, and, uh, you know, I was expecting it to go lower. You know, I wanted to pick it up at around $0.10 cents or so, uh, but it bounced, you know, real quick, and I tried to get in, but it just was too quick, you know. Quick, quickly made a mistake with order, only took 100 share lots by accident. And right here at 0.1214, and then I had to get in at 4 tenths higher um, just to get in. And uh, we're, still, we're still up for the day, but, uh, you know, it was a mistake. Next time I have to pay attention to my trades. I, it happened, this happens to all traders, not just me. Um, but, you know, just try to make sure you don't make mistakes. It's, it's normal. It's part of a trading lifestyle. Uh, sometimes uh, you have too many things going on, which is not a good thing when you're trading. But, uh, you know, you have to make sure when you enter trades, you enter them properly or you can hurt yourself. You know, maybe even go out for a loss, uh, God forbid. But uh, let's uh, let's move down to, uh, well, let's see what Gilead did. Gilead is down $2. I mean, it still does not doing anything for us but it's down two bucks today uh, let's see if this downtrend continues you see this daily downtrend um, so I want to see this da downtrend continue hopefully it'll just crack and it'll look good for us moving forward uh, Malaysia Airlines Malaysia Airlines uh, trading sideways choppy trading over here it's, you know it seems like it was choppy trading for quite a while but it looks like maybe we'll get a possible a reversal right here uh, it's gonna bounce down to maybe 0 0.0147 then continue going higher okay so uh Malaysia airlines does look stable does look strong um not too bad it looks healthy um however and uh now let's go into nexio let's see what nexio is offering nexio this is nexio so we're struggling Nexio uh, actually followed me on Twitter today at Zelman Yakubov at Z E L M A N Y A K U B O V. Okay, so uh, they followed me today on Twitter. Um, you guys should follow me too. Get latest updates on market trends and views, and obviously this video, of course. Um, however, you you see there is just sellers again in this market. I'm trying to figure out. Buyers stepped in at 0 0.02. Buyers kept in 0 0.02, uh, 0 0.0002. They actually even tried to like scare 0 0.0003 by making a print. That didn't scare uh, the sellers at all. They just took over 0 0.0002 again. Um, you know, what are they going to do? Take care of 0 0.0001 again? <laughs> I mean, it's going to it's going to trade with the ask is going to be 0 0.0001 is. Is that what it's looking like it's going to turn out to be? Um, I really hope not. Okay, I really hope they, uh, you know, the CEO um, 
actually is a man his word and says the stock should stabilize and they're not going to do no more reverse splits so hopefully there won't be no reverse splits and hopefully it'll stabilize moving forward all right and i think that is it let's just take a look at freddie mac because i've been paying attention to freddie mac and uh you know just trying to see it looks like it uh finally bottomed over here and uh you know, I can't even make that statement. Let's backtrack. It doesn't look like it finally bottomed. Not on the daily chart anyway, but it does show on the 10-minute chart it did stabilize and try to create a bottom over here. Uh, this bottom's not that strong enough. It's like, hey, you want to try to buy in here, and if you do, this is its bottom. But if you get, uh, if it goes down, I'll put my stop order pretty much at the lows of its current uh previous lows let's, let's just go back and I'll tell you um, it, I would place my stop order underneath this green bar or just underneath this shadow here whichever is lower just to give it a shot you know uh, I would say 225 would be my stop it's at 241 it's a 16 cents risk but if that's what you're gonna do I'm still uh, sketchy about this but tomorrow it could pop you know it could go to 275 all we know all right so I guess uh, pretty much that's it you know, uh, what else I'm looking at is BYSD uh, also seem like uh, stabilizing over here. I just want to see what's going to happen because what caught my eye is uh, a lot of stabilization at, at around point uh, double zero uh, one zero, right? But I want to go back to the weekly and it just looks like, let me just move further back a little bit and show you what it looks like. You see? So... It does look like it's stabilized right here, and especially this hammer, it does look good. I just want to see, you know, if it breaks through 0 0.0011, chances are I think it's going to pop. So I'm looking into this as a trade as well. All right, so we'll see that what um, we do with BYSD. We might jump into that tomorrow. Uh, I'll stop the recording here. Remember, this tutorial is brought to you by WorldTradingInstitute.com. I provide live trading courses to educate individuals on how to invest and trade properly. Um, feel free to contact me. Go to WorldTradingInstitute.com. You can uh, contact me that way, or you can take one of our courses in the near future. And uh, do apologize if you're hearing alerts in the background, but that's what my phone does mostly because... Uh, I have a lot of things going on at one time. Anyway, I'll pause it here. I'll post this on uh, YouTube, Twitter, and other social networks, including especially WorldTradingInstitute.com. Uh, feel free to review it. Let me know your thoughts. Have a great day. I'll start another recording tomorrow morning.